Welcome back. This is Gary Parr with Fiber Talk, and I'm here with Nicola Parkman from Hands Across the Sea Sampler, and we're going to look at some sampler. We are going to look yes. at a very special sampler, a band sampler from the 1600s, yes. 1656. M MH 1656. We yes. know her initials, but we don't know her name. No. And 1656, it's such a long time ago. And it's quite amazing that the sampler is in such wonderful condition. This is the part I cannot get over, is the condition of this thing for, what, 400 some odd years. Nearly 400 years old. And, and to be in this condition is, it's amazing. It is, it's absolutely amazing. And, and it's not like it was stored in some archive, some museum or anything like that. Well, we don't know where it was stored. It was most probably rolled up and popped in a box somewhere and just uh -huh. forgotten about and then discovered maybe in an attic. You just don't know, yeah. do you? Now, you said that, that this was mounted on cardboard when you got it? Yes, it was mounted on a cardboard backing board and it was framed. Um, and when it arrived and I took it out of the frame and I very gently listed, lifted it off the cardboard and then the back became evident. And this is when my heart was beating faster <laughs> and faster. Um, and the back just reveals so much. Now, you can see, Gary, here, evidence of the card is yes. still stuck to the sampler. And I'm not going to pull that off because that could pull the silk threads off with it. Mm -hmm. This is going to go to a conservator and they will remove this and then... Um, you know, you it'll be um, can, it'll be mounted properly and reframed, and maybe in another hundred years' time, somebody else will have the thrill <laughs> of taking it off right of the frame and uh -huh. exposing the back. Yep. Aren't those colours beautiful? Oh, they're Just look at the scrumptious greens there. Isn't that gorgeous? It's utterly Just amazing. Here. And then if we come all the way down here, Gary, if your knees will bend, because she's a long sampler. It's a long ride down, yeah. folks. Look at the greens in that. Isn't that So beautiful? rich. Amazingly 400 rich. years later, and it's still that rich. Just, um, it's such a special sampler. Yeah. really is. And so little damage to it. Just a couple holes here and there, and that's it. It's amazing. Now, when you charted this... Did you use the colors from the back? I use the colors from the back because I just think they're so special. Sorry, folks, for the quick ride back up the scale here, but. Yeah, we've got creaking knees, haven't yes. we? Yeah. So it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, she starts her sampler at the top with some rows of running stitch and um, double running stitch. And in fact, they're so, it's such fine stitching you can hardly see, but this is a row of a combination of running stitch and double running stitch. Yeah, now in the front, yeah, the front it is so delicate, it's so beautiful. You can yeah. see still more of that cardboard. I'm glad yeah. I'm not the conservator that gets to clean that up. Yeah, <laughs> and then this row is a combination of double running stitch and satin stitch. And look at those apricots, isn't that scrumptious? Yes. Yes, and turn, turn that turn that around, would you please? I will, yes. Let's look at that from the front. And folks, it's marketing. Yes, we're in front of the display of Hands Across the Sea Sampler charts. Buy one today. It's marketing. <laughs> <laughs> but there, yeah, now you can see the stitches here. And you can see how the apricot on the front here is faded to this beautiful um, sort of delicate oh, what color would you call that it's a blush yeah a blush of pink there just so gorgeous and she proceeds down this is a lovely little sweet row of um, double running stitch yeah that's beautiful like little curly waves that's right and again it repeats double running stitch with some infill of satin stitch and she's starting to get a little bit more adventurous with her patterns, a little bit more creative, but we're still sticking with the double running stitch and the satin stitch. And we're carrying down. Yep. She's creating different shapes and patterns. And all of these, she may have embroidered on her gown. 
mm. she might have trimmed the edges of her cuffs uh -huh. with this sort of um, pattern. Mm -hmm. When she was older, she may have got this out of her work basket and embroidered this on her husband's shirt. Mm -hmm. Or his waistcoat. Yep, good practice. For, good uh, practice, yes. Yeah. yeah, you can see as she works her way down, she, she really tries a lot of things. That's right. Now, this is interesting. She's alternating the colors. Yes. So this looks like double running stitch, but this is actually two combined rows of single running stitch <laughs> using two colors. Inventive. Yeah, and then we have this lovely uh, band of grapes and this this band I have to say is one of my favorites because of all the delicate little line work and it's really that's hard to right. show it but uh, there's a lot of little line work in there that's yeah. very delicate and what I would like to do is turn this around so we can see this from the reverse yes there. and then we can just see how those greens yep. just burst off the linen yes and I think as well that the combination of the two colors, you mm -hmm. know, it stands out even more on the back of the sample. Yes. Yes. But it's just that delicate work that she did is really impressive. That's right. Yes. That's right. Um, let's turn her back around so that we're looking at the front. And she's still practicing her double running stitch her, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like black work yes. and of course black work isn't black it can be in any color right. so she's still practicing that and she's infilling with satin stitch and we're proceeding down now this band becomes more interesting she's yeah, getting I want, yeah. more adventurous and but what, what, what do you know about if anything about these shapes um, they're really unique aren't they you not see really? them quite a bit. Oh, do you? You know, not they're not in they're not every you day. You see them quite a bit. You know, I don't see them quite a bit. <laughs> in band softness, you will see them. Oops, that's in the wind. And then we come down here, and her bands are getting wider. Yes. Okay, but we're still working with double These running. These are kind stitch. of this omega shape here. It is actually, isn't yeah. it? So, um, and we're continuing downwards, and now we get to a very interesting band with what we see are boxes. And these boxes were stitched upside down. Um, now, in the 1600s, when these were stitched, they probably weren't called boxes. These were called boxes by 19th and 20th century collectors oh. because of their stance with hands raised. Oh, okay. All right, um, and it's believed that they could have been inspired by huh. um, the putty that you find in Italian Renaissance art. Hmm. Um, and you know, the, these are wearing stockings. <laughs> yes. Which you see quite often. And then we come down, and we see pineapple. And a pineapple is associated with royalty. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a very beautiful motif. I can't wait to stitch that. Yeah. And now her sampler is becoming uh, more technically challenging. I was going to say, we really see a progression of sophistication we do. as we go down, which is interesting in its own right. Well, yes, because the band sampler, it was a learning exercise that progressed in difficulty. Yes. This um, little girl, as she was stitching her sampler, she was learning, and she was getting better and better and more adventurous. So here we come to Montenegrin stitch. Yeah, now talk, talk about that, because now we have a book. Yes. We have a book that, that you recommend people get if they're going to do That's this, right. this um, sampler. This is... The Autopsy of the Montenegrin Stitch by Amy Mitten is an absolutely fascinating... Getting a little glare. There sorry, we go. Yeah. An absolutely fascinating book. And Montenegrin Stitch is not a difficult stitch when you know the stitch path. It's made up of straight stitches stitched on the vertical and the diagonal. 
and um, now, and, and we have this exhumed because this is this was once out of print. Well, no. Um, how did that, what's the I, story behind that? I think that exhumed relates to that Amy issued a book many years ago that was called The Autopsy of the Montenegrin Stitch, and then she discovered more combinations, so oh. she reissued it, and it was called Exhumed. And oh. this book went out of print. It's been so sought after, but um, with MH being released. Amy uh, republished the book oh. and it, the, the concept behind it is absolutely wonderful. When you look at the book, it shows the direction you're stitching the Montenegrin stitch. So this is on the horizontal from um, left to right, this is from right to left, this is on the vertical. And then you start getting to all different combinations. <laughs> okay, oh so... Oh, my word. Isn't that just... So, let's um, say we're going to stitch Montenegrin stitch following this direction. So it tells us to go to page 31. So we turn this over to page 31. Just bear with me. So, page 31... So this is the direction we want to stitch the Montenegrin, okay. mm -hmm. and Amy has charted out the stitch path for exactly us, which takes out all the um, the hard work in working out your stitch path. Now, when, when you see this, you see why we need a book. Yeah. Well, you can <laughs> work it out for yourself. When you understand the mechanics of the stitch, uh -huh. you can plan your own stitch path. But this makes it so much easier. Yeah. And it's a super book. It's a flip book. And you just flip it open to what you want. It will stand up. It's nice and rigid. Um, it's just invaluable. And um, I treasure this book. And it's a book I never put down and not know where it is. I'm always very careful to yeah. um, <laughs> make sure I don't lose yeah. this book. Well, I saw someone the other day who uh, it was not called for in whatever they were stitching chose to do the Montenegrin stitch. Yes. And I thought, well, that's an interesting choice. because. Absolutely. It, it, you know, it's known to be complex, yeah. but it really is a beautiful It's result. an absolutely beautiful stitch, and of course it's reversible. So, shall we turn the sampler over sure. and have a look? At, we'll compare the front and yep. the back so that um, our listeners can see. So, if we look at this section on the front, okay, so we're taking that in, and I'm just going to turn that around, All right. and we have a look at the back. You see, so it's a beautiful stitch, both back and front. And you could understand, you know, why Elizabethans and people in the Jacobean period would have used this stitch a lot to, you know, adorn their garments mm -hmm. because fabric would have been plain. The embellishment of garments was down to an embroiderer. Right. Mm -hmm. So... You know, it's just a very, very beautiful stitch. And MH is using that extensively. In this bottom section. In the whole bottom section. That's right. So she bought the book. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she would have loved the book to have been available. But books were such a scarce thing. This is why band samplers were stitched. This was a visual catalogue of embroidery stitches. Yeah. And this is what she would have referred to. She would not have got out a book. She would have got this out to see how to right. stitch a certain right. uh, motif or a, a pattern. Well, you know, that, that's one thing that stands out for me. You know, we, we talk about samplers as, as that, examples, yes. reference sources. Yep. This, this is one that really stands out as a reference source for a lot of stitches. Yes, yeah, and a very beautiful one as yes. well. And it's so colourful. When you think of the past, you always think of in black and white, and you always think in darkness and dinginess. But in the past, colours were very, very vivid. Right. They needed to be vivid to be seen in the dark. Mm -hmm. yeah, just think. Well, it's so and beautiful. often we don't think. We, we always think that we have the best dyes and the best colours, but uh, no. Well, <laughs> we probably <laughs> have the most stable dyes yeah, and the still. most controllable dyes and the, the greatest variety of dyes but you know people were creative and they you know some of the colors might be considered bold because mm -hmm. they didn't have the control over the the mm -hmm. dyes maybe but there are some beautiful colors in there 
beautiful. Look at this blue down here, Gary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that gorgeous? Well, this and this uh, interwoven, I'm sure there's a name for it. Is that a Celtic? A Celtic knot. Knot? Yes. Yeah, isn't okay. that gorgeous? Yes. Absolutely but Now, here's, here's this band here. Here's another one with some interesting challenges and beautiful colors and shapes. Yeah. And, and, and really well organized, well uh, put together, too. Yeah. It's all very geometric. Yes. Very much so. Yeah, and I love that kind of U-shaped border that goes down the side and under the bottom there. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, with band samplers, the early band samplers, um, they're very sort of stepped and angular. And these patterns came from Islamic Egypt and they came into Europe and oh. England through trade. Uh -huh. And then over the decades, they were more heavily influenced by German and Italian Renaissance art and you know the, it, it, it goes from sort of geometric patterns into motifs mm -hmm. but of course Elizabethans they loved patterns mm -hmm. so um, you know mm -hmm. and you think about um, Elizabethan gardens you know they were laid out yes. in geometric yes. forms and you look at their costumes in the beautiful paintings mm -hmm. that hang in galleries yeah. and you, you have geometric Geometric patterns, yeah, yeah. very much so. Now she, she started that that uh, um, U-shaped border there, and then <laughs> didn't quite have. No, it. she ran out of <laughs> space. So, and of course, with a band sampler, the length of the band sampler would have been the width of the loom that the fabric was uh -huh. woven on. Uh -huh. So the bottom edges are the selvage edges. Can you see? That's the. Oh, she's. That's I mean, the selvage. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm forgetting. I need to aim the camera. That's Look at that. Right. She stitched right in the That's selvage. Yeah. So that was the selvage, and so top and bottom represent the width, uh -huh. and then these edges are hem stitched. Oh yeah. <laughs> Very delicately hem stitched. You can see it maybe more there. Yeah. Now, when we get to the very bottom, I'm just going to turn this back around All right. the right way. I'll stay right here. You stay right there <laughs> because of your knees. My okay. knees are fine, Nicola. <laughs> my knees aren't. I've been stood on my feet all day. So, when we're looking at these stitches, these are cross stitch from the front, but on the back they are reversible. Oh. So, let's turn them around. And um, you can see on the back, the front is cross stitch and the back is little squares. Oh, yeah. And this is a reversible cross stitch, but really it was a marking stitch. Uh -huh. mm. And they were, it was called a marking stitch because ladies would embroider initials and numbers on their household linen. So when it was sent off to be laundered, they could get it back. They knew which was theirs yeah. to get it back. Uh -huh. So every um, lady needed to be able to mark her linen so that was a very important stitch mm -hmm. to be able to mark and they may not necessarily have been able to read and write but, but they they could, they could mark um mm -hmm. initials onto a piece of household linen and i think you know that's something that people need to, to have in mind too is when we talk about the alphabet, and you heard it more than once, that people need, that they needed to know how to stitch the alphabet, but they didn't necessarily read Neither or write. Right, no. So this was a challenge for them. That's right. Now I'm just going to turn this around, and um, you can see here she's put her initials mm -hmm. M H, and you can just see the twenty third, and she's put the little sign right there May. 1656 <laughs> and it actually shows better on the back side. on the back side yeah. wow isn't that beautiful yep yep it's just such a gorgeous sampler and what we're going to do in the beginning of november we're having a stitch along for this sampler mm -hmm. and i'm going to be quick right up the top right. folks okay so i'm going to be <laughs> let me get up as well i'm going to be um stitching a band a month and I'm going to be posting my progress on Facebook. Oh, so, so it's literally good. you're going to do every month a band? A band mm -hmm. and um, people don't have to stitch that band every month. They can stitch faster, they can stitch slower or they can stitch with me and um, I'll be sharing 
with uh, people who are following the stitch along just some tips and tricks along mm -hmm. the way of how I tackle a band like when we um, you can see this better here this row here I'll post my stitch path to show them how I did it mm -hmm. um, that will be helpful that will be helpful yes and um, for you as well as for the me as, well, yes um, <laughs> you know I've got to sit down and work it out right. how mm -hmm. it's going to be done I have already worked it out and and you know to know how it's done and I'll be sharing that and it will be a nice way for people to join in stitching a band sampler they can choose to stitch it reversibly or they can just stitch it so that it's from the front but um, yeah that's something that, now the chart is, is set up for reversible stitching that's right because the stitches used are naturally reversible and, and I love the centerfold. Show the centerfold oh, the because centerfold. that's 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 a new thing, a relatively new thing. That's right. We have the front of the sampler, and then we have the back of the yeah. sampler, so that you can see um, what we're aiming yes. for. Mm -hmm. And with the chart, every stitch um, is laid out for you. Mm -hmm. So. Um, these two pages represent the whole width of this band. Oh, okay. So you can see this. Oh, so row as I here. look at the book, I see the full band all the way across. Cross. Which I think, you know, yes. we were able to do it with this one because she is very narrow. Yes. Um, but this is a big help. It is a big help, isn't it? Yeah. So um, I'm, you know, and you can see here, this is your satin stitching that you're going to be infilling. This motif here is one of these yes oh well actually I'm pointing to a blue one there yeah. is actually um, but but you can get a real sense of the delicate line work looking at the chart here that's right yeah. so they alternate between the um, peachy color and the blue color right the way across mm -hmm. so and then um, when we come down to this band it's here yes Yes. So. Okay, so now you have, uh, here we're, we're at Sassy Jack's, the, the people you hear in the background is at Stitch Night at Sassy Jack's That's right. in Weaverville, North Carolina, and, yeah. and we're here with Nicola for, she's here for uh, three two-day events, yeah. so that's why we're doing it, and that's why you're hearing noise in the background, and it's also a uh, motorcycle night out on the street. I know, so, it's amazing, there's no So you get a couple Harleys every now and then, but um, you, you, we have two silks. That's right. So, so talk about what we would do there. Well, MH... I appreciate it's a choice, but... That's right, it's a choice. MH's sampler was stitched on uneven weave linen, and the closest linen that's available to match that is 46 count. And if you stitch the sampler on 46 count, um, the width is 5.65, where the original is 5.25. So you are 0.4 of an inch wider. So 46 count is the, mm -hmm. the most equivalent. But it will be longer because her, um, her weave on the, uh, on the length was a, a higher count than 46. Okay. But you, know, you, you just can't get that. Yeah. So on 46 count... I intend to use the um, Auvergne Assoir Soy uh, 103, which is finer than the, um, the Dalger silks. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be using this for the, the everything other than the satin stitch. But with the satin stitch, I'm going to uh, embroider that with the uh, Dalger. But those okay. colors are just scrumptious. Yes. So you're, you're going you're gonna to stitch it on 46 count. I am. That's my personal challenge because my eyesight is not the best. And I had to have some eye surgery last year that's affected my vision. So my challenge is working on 46 count. Okay. But um, that's just my personal yeah. challenge. People should stitch this sample on the count that they're comfortable with. Right. And if they're stitching... On a lower count than 46, then you will use the uh, Darger for all of it. For all of it. Yes. And then, and so, but on the satin stitch, then you're going to use this 
because it'll feel better. Yes, and the sheen on this and the way it sits. There, there is that sheen. I'm, sh I'm stroking there, it. <laughs> isn't there that sheen? It is. So, <laughs> yes. so much. Yes. So, You know, both packs available. Um, Jean at the attic has got both packs available as well. Yes. So, um, you know, everybody's welcome to join in. They don't have when to. When does it start again? I'm going to start posting at the beginning of November. Of November. Yes. Plenty of time to get your linen and your That's threads. Plenty linen of threads. Time. Yes, absolutely. So that and means I've got till then to get Sarah Bray's ear done. Oh gosh. And then I can do. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes. Nothing but time, Nicola. No, no. But this is a very special sampler. You don't see many samplers no. like this become available to be reproduced. Well, in, in this old and in this condition, it just I, I cannot right. get over the condition of this thing it's for its age. It's very, very special. Yes. You know, you think of the world events this has lived through yes. and, oh, yes. and all the different places. It's been, if only it could talk to us and tell its, yes. us its story. Yeah. Well, that's just terrific, Nicola. Thanks for the tour there. You are so welcome, Gary. All right, so November 1st. November 1st, we start. So yes. Get your threads, get your linen, linen, get ready. And get your Montenegrin book as well yes. whilst it's available. All right, thanks. Okay, thanks.